Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, welcome to the University of Eucadia intro calls. Uh, what we do is we bring each week uh, information forward on how to gain competence and uh, also knowledge of the restoration of law. And what better way to do that than uh, talk to the founder architect of Eucadia One Heaven, which is Frankel Collins. Frank, uh, great. Thanks for bearing with us while we get onto this uh, this new uh, uh, thing over here where uh, we're taking over uh, in short notice. Uh, again, as we've had some technical difficulties, but uh, we will uh, pull through and uh, and manage to go through the first hour. Uh, there's a lot of information to cover, and then we're going to have uh, some question and answer on the second half of the show. Frank. Uh, there, there's a lot of uh, amazing things going on in regards to land and, and also the origins of law. Uh, it, it's wonderful to have you uh, here tonight, so uh, let's begin. Okay, great. Thanks, Brian. Uh, hello, everyone who's on the call tonight, and hello to everyone who will be listening to the call. There are a number of exciting things, very exciting things, as well as important topics to cover. So let me start by what I, I normally do is to just give a, a quick summary of the topics that I'd like to talk about. And then, as Brian said, in the following hour, hour and a half, I want to be able to answer as many of your questions as you can. Just in that time, if you feel you want to make a statement, by all means, uh, if, it's, if it's a key part of your question, by all means. But bear in mind that if it is a long statement, uh, it's not really the format for that. So if you've got something where you do want to make a statement, that's the reason we have the Eucadia, University of Eucadia forums. We're perfectly entitled to express opinions and ideas and encourage you to do that. Uh, so if you've got a, a genuine question, please uh, let us know. Um, hash aid or type it into the chat box and I'm sure Brian will be able to pick those up and, and let us know. And let's start. So tonight, what we want to talk about is I want to talk about the update on ecclesiastical deed polls and the ongoing issue of these being dishonoured and the number of people who may at this point be feeling frustrated if you've got to the second or even the third of the ecclesiastical deeds and it feels like there's no remedy. I, I want to give you some bright news on that. There is actually remedy and there's remedy through the set-off. In other words, you can't be two things. You can't deny us our standing and refuse to pay the bills if you claim either give us what is our property or pay our bills. You can't have both, and I'll explain that. I want to talk about land and the important updates to land, and in particular, the work that's been done, the quite detailed work that's been done on the history of land and the moving into the remedy of saving your home, how to save your home. And there's two options there. I want to talk about that. I want to talk about the progress on writs. I know that writs have been, the great writs have been an issue outstanding. I know that a number of you have very significant issues where the writs and having them ready would be invaluable. And I know that you've been very patient waiting for that to happen. So I want to talk about that. I also want to talk just briefly about what's coming up in the next few weeks once we get through these on the issue of saving and helping your community. And the reason I want to raise this is that the austerity measures that have started already in Europe are now creeping in around America and Canada. And I know that a number of you are, are, are seeing a, a, an even bleaker outlook in terms of what's happening. So I want to talk to you about the progress we've got on saving and helping communities. And just to cap off, I just want to come back to progress towards the conveyance and the gifting of whole of Eucadia ahead of the end of the year, where I hope that all of Eucadia, in fact, all of Eucadia, well, not hope, all of Eucadia will be conveyed at a grassroots level and I will have um, ceased to be involved or a part of uh, Eucadia. So let's start again. EDPs, dishonours, talk about the set-off, land, writs, saving and helping the communities, 
and of course um, the progress on towards the end of the year. But I want to start on something first and I know I've raised this subject in the past few weeks about people saying things and comments about Eucadia and the kind of chatter that people have. Opinions, and I've said this, and I'm not going to go repeat myself over and over, but I want, to, I want to express a story because there are certain things that give you a window into the mind of the people that you're dealing with when you're dealing with a court matter or a bill or an injury or some injustice that you're trying to seek remedy of. There's a rare window. We actually get to see how they think. And I think it's instructive. In the last few weeks, there's, uh, as there is always, but increasingly so in a few areas, there's been a band of self-appointed uh, um, skeptics that have been running around saying all kinds of ignorant and, and silly things. Ignorance in itself is not a, a, a big issue, but then you start to discover that a number of them are, in fact, lawyers, and in fact, a number of them um, in the past have even had some official roles within the courts. And what you discover in their commentary is that they absolutely denounce that there is anything ecclesiastical whatsoever associated with the courts. They absolutely deny that the courts have any ecclesiastical function anymore. It may be custom, it may be tradition, but they wholly reject the idea that the courts have any ecclesiastical authority, what, uh, authority it's not authority, but any ecclesiastical functions anymore. They regard the ecclesiastical deeds as uh, a, a uh, obsession, a hilarity, they view the concept of the seal in blood, even though pole comes from Latin, polex, thumb, thumbprint, and that the concept of, an, of a deed pole is, in fact, only valid when it is sealed by a thumbprint, and the most important being a thumbprint in blood. That is the actual meaning of it. They totally and wholly reject that. In fact, they think Latin is something that is an oddity, uh, something that is archaic, something is a dinosaur and they think it's funny. They think it's old men's funny business, just like they probably think that the Masons are old men's funny business. Now, I'm just paraphrasing their mind. But there's one thing that I, I took from what I saw as being one of the most valuable insights to understand the mind of these people. And it was a comment that one of them made in response to, please, Provide some knowledge. Please don't relish in your ignorance. Please show some interest in history. And the answer was, I am perfectly comfortable with the existing system. I am perfectly comfortable with the existing system. In other words, they see nothing wrong with the existing system. This is the existing system that is going to see untold numbers of people face the dire prospect of death by hunger in the next 12 months because of food prices and the failing of economies to manage their demands. Where we see spills in, in Mexico, where we see growing tensions around the world, where we see vast corruption, where we see counties not being able to even afford to manage the police, where we see classrooms closed down, where we see people dying in the streets in America, literally dying in the streets because they cannot afford to pay benefits. And these people are perfectly comfortable with the existing system. Dishonor to them means nothing. The roots of the system mean nothing. They see power and know not from where it comes. Don't care from where it comes. It's just that they know that they can do certain things and they use them. This is the mind of children. This is the mind of idiots. And yet this is the mind we're dealing with. Those that serve the elite anti-Semitic parasites. Parasites being a mental illness. So I want to share that with you because that is the mind we're dealing with. So when you're 
Ecclesiastical deep poles are dishonoured. When your standing in honour is dishonoured, it's not because someone in some high place has said, let me put the pressure on you. Is that the system is full to the brim of mindless, stupid, childish people that are perfectly comfortable with the way the system runs for them. Now, history makes strange bedfellows. And we're going to talk a bit tonight about what happens when you actually do perfect the dishonour process through hearings and what we are doing in perfecting the dishonour process and what happens with strange bedfellows when we finally hold these people to account. What happens when those from high get that accumulated dishonour and what they can do. But it is a frustrating process. It is a time process but there is an outcome from it. So I want to move now to ecclesiastical depots because amidst all this, I know that there are a number of you frustrated, terribly frustrated by this process and the, and the sense that there is no quote-unquote win. In actual fact, there are wins already. There is a win in being able to establish a claim of right and no longer accept your fate as a slave to a system. There is a win in standing competently. There is a win in learning the knowledge despite of the joyous relish of ignorance of the people I've just described that see no problems with the existing system. I want to explain something about the ecclesiastical deed and, and where we're at in terms of providing some assistance. There are two options that the existing system has when presented with an ecclesiastical deed and the subsequent documents. One, they honour them, or two, they dishonour them. Now, the existing system claims, parens, patre, patri, that they are the uh, father figure, and we are the children, and being children, we are not competent to make our decisions. And when they reject our ecclesiastical deed poll, they are claiming that role still, that they are the parent and we are the child. Well, one of the, the, the things that we want to see is that we get bills. We get bills from the IRS, the tax. We get bills for credit cards. We get bills for mortgages. We get bills for utilities. And life is hard and has been very hard for people. No one has the right for a free right. No one has the right for others to work for them and for they to do nothing. We are responsible. That's the whole point of being competent. We are responsible for our own actions. However, when we struggle for pennies and they have stolen millions of dollars of your energy from you, millions of dollars of your energy from you. You have a right to say to your parents, the state who claims to be your parents, if you do not honour my competence, then by default you agree to pay the bills owed by the strong person. And this is the concept of set-off. Now the reason... That, and it's not a holding back, it's just a matter of work. The reason that the set-off process, which is showing you how to send the bills that the system sends to you off for payment because they will not honour your competence, the reason we have not pushed forward at a rapid rate, and I know that this is an urgent issue, is that our primary issue here is not simply to come up with magic remedies and short-term solutions. Our issue is and remains that the law is restored, that there is respect, that the strength of communities is returned, 
and that the system that has corrupted and enslaved